Regina is an LCSW and ACSW, a licensed clinical social worker with a master's degree in social work from Rutgers University. She's been in practice 35 years, is also a certified hypnotherapist, psychic, medical intuitive, animal communicator, feng shui master, reiki master, shaman and healer. She has studied with teachers, masters, healers, and shamans all over the world <laughs> and has conducted over a thousand past life regressions. So we're really delighted to have you, Regina. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you and good morning, everyone. Can you hear me okay? Clearly? It's loud enough? Okay. So oh, I'm back. going to, huh? I'm going to be doing a past life regression today for all of you. And before we go into it, I'll address the question, why do a past life regression? Um, it's fun to do. It's interesting. But most of all, it's healing and therapeutic. And that's going to be our intention today, or my intention for all of you. Um, very frequently, the roots or the seeds to issues or challenges we're having today can be resolved or healed by going to where they started. So I'll give you an example from a client of mine, uh, how that happens. I had a young woman limp into my office with great difficulty. She was a marathon runner. Her passion was running. And one day out of the blue, she woke up with a stabbing foot, a pain in her foot. And she thought, oh, it'll go away. And it didn't go away. And it kept getting worse and worse. And so she thought, oh, I need new shoes. So she got new shoes. And it still didn't go away. Then she went to a podiatrist who x-rayed her and checked her out thoroughly and told her there is not a thing wrong with your foot. So she knew that it was this it has to be a past life issue. So she found me and she wanted to examine the roots of this bizarre, mysterious thing going wrong with her foot. So I hypnotized her and the past life that she saw was in ancient China. Well, it wasn't that ancient. Um, I don't know historically when this was going on exactly, but we went back in time to China when they used to bind the feet of the woman because it was considered a sign of beauty to have these very deformed, tiny feet that women could barely walk let alone run. And if you look it up, there are still women in China today with these de grotesquely deformed feet, and they call them lotus feet, and they're really, they look like this. The toes look like this. And some people say it was really a plot to prevent women from running away from unhappy marriages. Just like some people say today that high heels are the same idea. <laughs> and maybe someday we're going to look back at how women used, uh, used to wear high heels this high, right? And the absurdity of that. Anyways, she saw a past life where she was a teenager and it, she was becoming of the age at which this foot binding would happen. And she begged her mother, please, please don't let them do that to me. And the mother who had done it done, had it done to her, said, nope, I had it done and you're gonna have it done. And she had this incredible rage at her mother for forcing her into it and it was done to her. And so um, I encouraged her to forgive her mother in that lifetime because she was still carrying that rage. And upon conclusion of this session, the pain completely left. 
and she walked out completely fine. Now that's a very dramatic example of how past life regressions can be very, very profoundly healing and very dramatic in their healing. It's not always quite that amazing, but I'm sharing it with you to demonstrate how and why we do past life regressions. Um, so I hope all of you have thought about what issue you want to work on today. It can be a challenge. It can be financial. It can be relationship. It can be career. It can be some kind of situation that you're in or facing or confronting at this time in your life. Very frequently going back to the origin gives you a much deeper insight, understanding, and compassion for what is going on or for an individual that you're having challenges with. It can also be used for finding out what your karma is with a soulmate, for instance, or a spouse or a child that you have a wonderful relationship with. I had a woman come to me recently who just met her soulmate and she was 79 years old. And she wanted to know, where did that come from? What is my history with that person? So when we do a past life regression, it happens through hypnosis. Is everybody here comfortable and familiar with hypnosis? Have you been, please raise your hand if you've been hypnotized. Oh, good. It can also be used to find out where your talents come from. For instance, I was born knowing how to cook. And when I was 10 years old, I started cooking and baking for my family, frequently without a cookbook. And sure enough, I had one regression done where I was a chef in Paris. So frequently talents, whether it be a musical instrument or dance or writing or poetry or whatever your talent might be, or art may have its root in the past. So has everyone had a chance to think about their issues that they want to focus on today? Okay. And is everybody here comfortable with hypnotherapy? Okay, so I will uh, help to guide you into a deep, pleasant state of relaxation, which is what the hypnotic trance really is all about. It's a deep, pleasant state of relaxation. And your higher self will choose the life that you're going to see. Sometimes you may see a life that is not easy. You may have tears coming up. Uh, it may be scary. It may be unpleasant. I'm just letting you know. Or it can be very pleasant as well. But often you see, keep in mind that we've all been on the dark side in past lives. We've all been murderers. We've been rapists. We've been pedophiles. We've done it all to get this to to this stage of evolution that we are currently experiencing, you had to go through the dark side to want to crave the light. You have had to experience dark, constricted phases in your evolution. And to be motivated to reach for the light, you have to have gone through that constriction. So are we ready to begin? So I'd like you to think about your issue. Be clear about what it is. Does anybody need help deciding on their issue to see if it's appropriate? Okay, good. So let's get started. So let's call in the angels, the masters, the beings of light to assist us in this journey. 
we welcome you. We ask for healing. We ask for awareness, insight, support with this issue. And it is this issue that is going to be the gateway into the past life experience that we are intending to have. So I encourage everyone to get very, very relaxed and very comfortable in your seat, leaning back. Take a deep breath and exhale any stress that may be in your body at this time. And let yourself go limp, loose, and relaxed. And all you need to do is listen to my voice. That's all you need to do. And let go. And starting with the top of your head, relaxing all the muscles in your scalp. Dropping your lower jaw, relaxing your tongue. And breathe naturally, easily, and effortlessly. Relaxing all the muscles on top of your scalp and letting this relaxed sensation sweep down your face, letting your eyelids grow heavy, heavy, heavy. And your cheeks, your jaw are all becoming relaxed, the rest of your skull and scalp. And now this relaxed sensation is sweeping down your neck, your shoulders, down your arms to the tips of your fingers, and down to your chest, your stomach, your pelvic region, down your legs, letting your legs grow limp like noodles, down to the tips of your toes, and breathe and let go. And now I'd like you to imagine an elevator is before you. It's on floor number 10. You enter, you press floor number one, and the elevator now takes you down. Excuse me. And with each descending floor, you are becoming more and more profoundly relaxed. 10, going down to nine, deeper and deeper, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. I'm snapping my fingers. Deep, pleasant state of relaxation. So now mentally ask your question, addressing the issue you have chosen. Like, what do I need to know about this situation that can help me with it in its resolution? Be very clear about what issue you are addressing. And we're going to go down to a different time and a different place where the seeds of this issue first were planted. So I'd like you to imagine a big globe of the world in front of you. It is slowly turning. And you can make out all the continents, the oceans, North America, South America, the Atlantic Ocean, Europe, India, Africa, Australia, all the continents, North Pole, South Pole. And it stops at one specific place and you can clearly see it on the map. You can see the writing on the globe of where this place is. You are now there. And now we go to a different time. 
So you see the year that we're currently in in front of you on a calendar, 2024. The leaf of the calendar drops and behind it, it says 2023. And behind it, it says 2022. And the leaves keep dropping, 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 dropping. And it stops at one specific year. And you can clearly, clearly see the year. And this is all happening easily and effortlessly. Easily and effortlessly. You are now there at this time and at this place. And you look down at your feet and you see if they are the feet of a man or a woman. And you see what you're wearing on your feet. Are they, are you barefoot? Are you wearing shoes? Are they the shoes of a wealthy person? Or a poor person? Are they the shoes of a peasant? Are you barefoot? Let yourself clearly, clearly see all of this. Your gaze now drifts upward and you see the rest of your body. You see your skin color. You see what you're wearing, what you look like. And you may recall your name. You look around you and you see where you are. You see the vegetation, you see the kind of houses that are there or dwellings. And breathe and relax. So today you're going somewhere. Where are you going? How are you feeling? What is your intention of going to this place? You have arrived and you see what's going on. You have accomplished your mission <laughs> and it's time to go home. You go home, you stand before your dwelling. Is it the dwelling of a wealthy family? Family with status? Or is it a dwelling of a poor person? Let yourself see it easily and clearly. You now go inside your home. Who do you share this home with? It's time for dinner. Who is at the dinner table with you? How do you feel about these people? Look into their eyes. Do you recognize them from anybody today in your life? How do you feel about them? How do they feel about you? What's going on in that group of individuals? What is the energy like? And now let's flash forward. What happens next?
let yourself see the happiest day of that lifetime. Let yourself see the most challenging time of that lifetime. Okay, you have now reached the end of that particular lifetime and you can see the circumstances of your passing. Is it due to disease? Is it warfare? Did someone kill you? Are you in your deathbed? If you're in your deathbed, look around you. Who is with you? How do you feel about leaving? The angels are now coming to escort you to your next transition. And you're leaving the body. And now it's time for your funeral. And you're hovering over the funeral, which is what souls do, by the way. And sometimes the soul literally is uh, offended by few, how a few people show up at the funeral or amazed at how many people show up at the funeral and how those people are feeling about their absence. So let yourself see what's going on at your own funeral and how you're feeling and reacting to that. And now you're given the opportunity to review that entire lifetime. And in one sentence, what was the positive lesson that you were meant to learn from that lifetime? Let it come to you easily and clearly and effortlessly.
And now I invite everyone to come back, remembering everything. Back into your body, back into the room. Come back to the elevator. It's on floor number one where we left it. You enter, you press floor number 10. And the elevator is bringing you up, up, up. And with each and every ascending floor, you're becoming more and more awake, alert, bringing the message, the awareness back with you into the present moment. Before we do that, ask yourself, is there anyone I need to forgive? Do I need to forgive myself? And to the best of your ability, see if you can do that now. Sometimes forgiveness comes easily. Sometimes it's a process. Sometimes there are many layers to it. See if you can do some forgiving right here, right now. See that person you were and ask them, what do you need from me now? And now prepare to come up the elevator, coming back to your body, back the room. One, coming up, two, up, 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 three, four, coming up, up, five, six, fully back in the body, fully back in the room, fully awake, seven, eight, nine, and 10. I'm snapping my fingers, wide awake, wide awake. So would anyone like to share what they experienced? Bill? Yeah, so kind of blew my mind there, Regina. Thanks. They can be mind blowing. You want to share it with us? <laughs> yeah, sure. Just a couple details. So, um, I went back to the year before I was born, and I was a woman, um, barefoot, um, in a small village in Africa. Um, and I didn't have a husband. I had children, however. Um, and it was just, uh, I don't know, there was a very, very emotional, a very emotional moments within, within this journey. Um, and I guess the lesson that I saw uh, was, or learned, was um, that I've heard this said before, and this kind of this kind of uh, amplified it 
the idea that we're all we're walking each other back to the light. Uh, I've heard that. I don't know who said that, but but I had that sense um, that it was it was my children and it was the other people in the village, the dancing and and everything. It was very supportive, and we were we were all together, and and that that was my that was what I was what I was up to. Thanks. And what was the issue you addressed, if you don't mind sharing it with us? Well, you know, it had nothing to do with that. It was a, a business situation um, and uh, with a couple of partners um, working with and just trying to kind of fathom our way through, you know, some of the next steps. So rather mundane in comparison to, you know, the, the big life issues that, that I dreamed about. Thank you for sharing. Anybody else want to share? Mary Grace? I find myself uh, hesitant to share because mine was just so um, bizarre. <clears throat> I um, did not have an issue. I just asked that would ever serve the highest good to come forward. And um, I was an alien and um, reptile. When I looked down at my feet, they were, they, they looked almost like my hands with the toes, sort of a silver and gray color. I had long, slender legs. <clears throat> And then, um, it, you know, it was very um, like a, a snake, and yet there was a body with arms and legs. And um, I lived in the water, in the ocean, under the Middle East in that part of the world. Um, it's interesting because I've had um, other experiences with this, but never... Um, this was different. This felt much more um, personal. Did you have feelings? <laughs> <clears throat> um, I felt very calm and peaceful mm -hmm. to connect to that part of myself. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and do you think you gained any understanding from this experience? Well, the, the snake, the reptile, is always an active part of my life, you know, for many years now. And um, um, I certainly felt more at peace with it. Do you um, like snakes in this lifetime? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you for sharing. Anybody else? Nita? Nita? Muting. I had to unmute. Uh, <clears throat> I was sort of half-hearted about it. And then as you began saying, look at the globe, what is the year? You know, how are you dressed? It was so specific and quickly, it almost frightened me. It was like uh, Italy, 1604. <laughs> like, what? Um, how was I dressed? I was dressed well. Uh, I was wealthy, but not aristocratic. Um, I lived in a big home, and I was the matron of the home. And uh, I would go out into the market and I would buy lots of food and fresh fruit and vegetables. And then I would bring it back to the house and I would distribute it to all the people that worked in the house. And uh, um, I loved them all and they all loved me and we had a great life. And uh, it was like, we work together to ensure our good life. And uh, I, rem 
I I knew exactly what I was wearing. I could describe the outfit. <laughs> and at the funeral, it was all of those people and they all gathered around and I was very, very old. And, uh, uh, and the, what she wanted to tell me was, don't forget, it's important to share everything you have. And that was it. Thank you. So sharing was the lesson. The beauty of sharing and the gratification. Yep. And here you are wanting to rescue <laughs> this little creature, right? Right. Yeah. Anybody else? Linda? Um, the year was 1863. And uh, I was in a house. And we were all sitting around a big table. And then when it got to money, I was pushed out. So really, I was talking about finances. And uh, I had to forgive all the men who were there because they pushed the women out. I guess they thought we didn't have the brains. And... Uh, the what I gathered from that was I can learn myself. I can learn myself. I don't have to take it from someone. And uh, that's that's it. Thank you, Linda. Yeah. Anybody else? R Ruth has Ruth her hand up. up. Yeah. <laughs> Ruth. Good morning, Regina. Hi. Thank you. Thank you for the journey. I would like Nita, I was so surprised that it got so specific. <laughs> it was in Mor Morocco and it was the year 1341. I was a and man. You've been to Morocco, if I recall, right? Yes. In this life. In this life. Mm -hmm. Um and, but I was a Spaniard. I was a man, I was a Spaniard. And I was very excited because I was going to ask for the hand of a woman, a local woman that I was in love with. And I wasn't sure that I was gonna get permission to marry her. And um, I did get permission. I came back home to share it with my mother and my brother. And then I, I did marry her, but I died very young and uh, felt very unfulfilled. I was worried about taking care of her, how she would be cared for, and also that I didn't get to fulfill whatever. I don't, I don't know. I didn't get a sense of what profession I had, but um, the, the issue I was dealing with was uh, spikes in my blood pressure that the doctors have never solved of why I get this. It's called labile hypertension. When, I'm not, I'm, I'm can be relaxed and suddenly my blood pressure will just shoot up. And so uh, the message I got was that each day is a gift and that even if you don't finish what you think you were here to do, as long as you have your heart in it, it's okay. You don't have to be worried. Beautiful. Thank you. So, so frequently we are drawn to the country. You know, we we all have a bucket list of countries we are drawn to go to. Frequently we're drawn back to those countries in this life, unconsciously. They say that we ought to make a list of all the countries we want to go to and a list of all the countries where we don't want to go. And that's a big clue as to where you've had the happy lifetimes and the very tough past lives. Mm -hmm. So this was bittersweet because I, I found the, my love and I got her permission to marry her, but it was very short lived. 
Mm -hmm. It was so strange to, to realize that I was in, not in my own land when I was there, that I was, I knew I was from Spain, that I was not from- You the, were a the, foreigner. Right. So this work led me to realize the importance of funerals. From my experience of hovering over my own funerals, I now know what happens at funerals and how the soul is hovering and very interested in what's going on at that funeral. Who's showing up? How are they feeling? Eugenia, you had your arm raised. Would you like to share? Yeah, I'd love to. Thank you. <clears throat> this was um, way cool. Thank you. Um, so I went, it, it, like everybody else, I was amazed at the specificness that showed up. Um, I was in Spain in 1691. And um, I was a, a male and I was, um, I worked in a blacksmith shop. I had a, I was doing hard work and, um, and I loved doing the hard work. And, and I had a woman that I loved who had beautiful eyes and we connected, um, our eyes were intense. And that was really the love. Um, I died before 50 and I was in the ground and as you said, you know, hanging around and there weren't a lot of people and it didn't matter and everything was good. Um, what I'm looking at is I feel I'm very stuck in my life. And so I think I may just still stay stuck and be okay with that. Thank you. Anybody else want to share? Okay, well, you've been a wonderful group to work with. Regina, Regina, someone else wants to speak. Pamela's trying to speak, but she's muted. Oh, okay. Pamela, I want to share? Yeah, yeah. Um, forgive me, the last few weeks, uh, I'm getting in late, but uh, I'll get back in time, I believe. What What is the subject or the question for the discussion? That's all. Can you tell me? Cause I, because I'm in... Were you here for the past life regression? Uh, no, no. Okay, so we have just completed a past life regression, and I'm asking who would like to share their experience with us. Okay, I just want to really quickly, uh, I knew nothing about France. I have relatives, but they came from Russia. And uh, I had always had an urge to go to France. Uh, and we had choices to learn languages in America, and I, I took French. I have no idea. I knew nobody. But uh, I just, I feel that in another lifetime, I was in, in France, and I've been here for more than 30 years now as an American, most of each year. And um, so I believe what you're saying, even though I haven't gotten through your your uh, process today, Um and uh, I'm very happy with the two countries that I was born in America, but and now uh, I come to America uh, two months out of the year generally, and and here uh, ten months, and uh, and it's lovely. I I just I was at home immediately when I arrived here, never having been here. I mean, how and is you that? You don't even have an accent either. Uh, no, I, well, I have an American accent because I am American. But if you want me to speak a little French, I can have an accent. No. <laughs> no. Okay. <laughs> Et bonjour. C'est une joie d'être avec tout le monde ici encore. Merci. Thank you. Okay, anybody else? Okay, so um, before I bid you adieu, 
I uh, just want to let you know that I will be coming back to do another presentation May 14th. And the title of that presentation is Physical Immortality, A Healing from the Zohar, which is one of the books of the Kabbalah. And I'm going to be doing that then. So I hope to see you all again. Anybody just, want to say anything before we uh, do we adjourn now, Mary Grace? No, I know Regina. Do. We'll take we'll take it when you're done. But I think Ruth has her hand. Ruth does have her hand up. Yeah. So okay. uh, uh, Regina, I had um an experience about uh 15 years ago where I did past life regression because there was someone in my life that I uh hated and loved i wanted to be, be with that person but i also didn't I couldn't stand that person and i knew i knew there was some key that was coming from a past life uh, and when i figured it out what it was and, and i understood why my emotions were so high and so conflicted uh, but i was told uh, by um, a spiritual teacher that it's imp it's wonderful when you can resolve an issue but you shouldn't make that person the center of this life, even if you know you had past um, relationship with that person, because each lifetime brings its lessons and you don't want to um, prevent yourself from experiencing everything you need to have in this life because you get hooked on something that happened, you know, several hundred years ago in another place in time with that same soul. So I wondered whether you could comment on that. I did. I'm not sure. Would you please clarify again what the, this psychic told you? It wasn't a psychic. It was a spiritual teacher. Yes. They, what they, did they tell you? Once, once you figure out a relationship, a troubling relationship you have with someone you know in this lifetime. Yes. That's helpful, but don't linger on it because you rob yourself of your ability to learn what you have to learn in this lifetime. Don't make this lifetime about that past lifetime. Point. Good point. Yeah. So, um, I have just found it so useful in the case of a conflicted, difficult relationship where I don't understand my own emotions. I found it so useful and helpful to go back to the past because now I can have more compassion for how I'm feeling about this person and more compassion for them. And yet you always want to be in the present moment and not be st st stuck in the past. Mm -hmm. And you want to achieve as much healing as you possibly can with that other soul. in the present moment. So as a psychic, I often get asked, who was I in a past life? And I have the ability to see past lives, but I way much more prefer for people to experience it themselves because often it's just a story. I have people to tell me all the time, a psychic told me that I was a blah, blah, blah. And it's just a story. And they're not getting the, the true essence or the true healing from that experience because it remains just a story and um they have no connection with it it's just a story so yes the psyche can tell you your past lives but it's like i said it's just a story until you experience it yourself hi good morning it's dr lee hi Hi. Are you, you mute yourself? Yes. Yeah. Ma'am, mute I'm yourself. Call, but, I, but I just uh, ma'am mute yourself. Just, uh, got rid of the sound, so I'm here. Oh, okay. Are you sure? Do you want me to call you? Yeah. Mute yourself. No, this, you let's see what she could introduce, Doctor Lee. To <laughs> <laughs> thank you for doing that, Mary Grace. Regina, thank you so much. I think uh, what I what I hear you saying is that uh, we need to take responsibility for our own story and ownership of it in terms of Good something point. coming from within. Yes? Good point. 
Thank you so much for this really informative, amazing experience. Mine was Mongolia, and I'm still working on that one, just so you know. So thank you. Thank you. Um, this has again been very enlightening. We're looking forward to your presentation later uh, in, in May. Mm -hmm.